Welcome everyone to Nigu TV chatting with Cade. My name is Maddie and I am the uh, all-star and athlete specialist here at the Jesse Reese Foundation. And today I have the honor and privilege of chatting with Cade. Cade, how are you, bud? I'm doing really good. Good. Well, I'm stoked to be here today chatting with you. And we have an awesome, awesome guest. Today we have Nigu all-star and current University of Kentucky baseball player TJ Collette joining us to chat with Cade. TJ, thank you so much for being here. On behalf of the Jesse Reese Foundation and everyone here, we are so grateful for you, for your heart, for Kids Fighting Cancer and all that you do to encourage um, Kids Fighting Cancer to never ever give up as Jesse wished. So thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited. Anytime that Cade comes knocking, I answer. Awesome, awesome. Well, Cade, I will let you take it away and start asking your okay. questions. Uh um, thank you for being here. Uh, what first drew you to Nigu? Well, so my Nigu adventure started when I was a junior in high school. Um, I got invited to a baseball competition showcase type thing called Area Code Games. I'm sure, Kate, you've heard of that. Yeah. Um, and I was asked to be on the White Sox organization team. And uh, one of the days in that event, uh, the White Sox team got a chance to spend a day with four courageous kids. Um, and at that time, I really had no clue what the Jesse Reese Foundation stood for. But then the next day, there was a big presentation. And then the How It Was Started video with uh, Jesse's mission and everything. And I just fell in love with it. And my first step was taking it back to my hometown, did some uh, uh, fundraising stuff. And then it just went from there. But it started in Area Code Games and just fell in love with what the Jesse Reese Foundation stands for and knew I needed to do more for everybody. Yeah, I like I've been to the area code games and it's like and I like seeing what they do with the kids and it's so awesome. Mm, yeah, uh, tell us, cool. yeah. Uh tell it, me, us about the um kids um that you bring out to games. What's that um um like? Like how do you do all the stuff with them? Honestly, it has been the highlight of my baseball career at Kentucky. It's been so much fun. It started by just doing hospital visits at UK mm -hmm. Children's Hospital. Um, but then eventually I found out that I wanted to do more where I wanted to bring kids into the games, actually. Um, so a little different from like Kellen, you're familiar with what Kellen does. But mm -hmm. what I do is Kellen does it after the games, but we actually do it before the games because that's kind of when like it's more free, like they can come to the mm -hmm. dugout. So we invite these kids from UK Children's they're all around Kentucky uh, to be our courageous kid of the day. They come in, they can give high fives, hang out, meet all the coaches, meet all the players, play catch. Uh, because honestly, baseball is pretty carefree. Like before the game, we're not really doing much. It might look like we're doing a lot, but we're not doing much. So uh, we invite them into the dugout. Uh, they get to meet everybody. And then uh, my favorite part of the whole experience for them is in uh, the middle of the third inning. Uh, they get a big introduction. They go stand on top of our dugout and face all the fans and stuff. And our announcer kind of like tells them a brief history, a little story, um, and then just gets flooded with encouragement. A big standing ovation from all of our fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that's super special to me is everybody on the field, everybody in our dugout comes out of our dugout. Everything stops and just all attention goes on to them to encourage them to never, ever give up. And that's just gives me chills every single time. Yeah. Um, but other than that, they just get, it, get to watch a ball game and – Hopefully, I try to hit a home run for him or something. Yeah, I've been on the I like I've been on the receiving end of that, and it's like so awesome. Thank you for doing that. Love it. Oh, uh, what do you um what do you love about the um hospital visit visits? The hospital visits are an incredible opportunity because I have a chance to bring my teammates along with me. Um, mm -hmm. That obviously comes from volunteering, so. Um, specific guys on the team fall in love with the same thing I fell in love with and want to get involved. Um, but the difference between a hospital visit and the pregame um, invitation to the kids is that I actually get to interact with them and their families, open up a joy jar. I get to have fun and play with them. I mean, my favorite thing in a joy jar is a fidget spinner, so I always start messing around with that. Yeah. But um, definitely my favorite part about the hospital visits are doing it with my teammates, but also interacting with the family and the kid and mm -hmm. overall just playing. Yeah. 
Yeah, like it's so fun. Like like when I'm in the hospital, like when I did chemo, like like they always have like some like actors and stuff. But like like we don't really know. Like we like sometimes like some baseball players, some hockey players sometimes pop in, and that's like so fun because it's always like like boys like we do not like we really love sports. So like we always like love when athletes come in and encourage us. So it's really fun. Thank and you. I remember meeting you for the yeah. first time when we yeah. were out on the baseball field, that was a blast. We yeah, got to was, actually hit. I wish we could do that with every kid that I meet, but we actually yeah. got to hit on the field, didn't we? Throw a little yeah. bit, play catch. You know, it was fun. Yeah, so fun. Uh, thank you for wearing the wristband in your games. Uh, I, when I look at my knee wristband, um, it inspires me to work hard in my therapy in, in school. Why do you wear yours? So, I mean, I got mine on right now, <laughs> but, um, I'll tell you what I tell the kids I meet in the hospital. Mm-hmm. I wear mine, and whenever we're opening up Joy Jars and I have them mm-hmm. put on theirs, I mm-hmm. remind them that anytime that they see us playing on TV or hear about us doing something really cool, not only me, but my teammates, we wear these wristbands because whenever we're playing, anytime that we look down and see it, we can refer back to y'all and just know that <laughs> we are extremely blessed and that we're fighting for you guys and having fun for you guys and uh, just taking advantage of the opportunity that we have and uh, just playing for y'all and just having as much fun as we can. That's at least what I tell the teammates that come with me and the kids that I meet in the hospital. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, I have my on too, right there. Atta boy. Yeah. Uh, how old were you when you realized that you were really good at playing baseball? Ooh, that's a tough question. When I was in Little League, like 10 or 11 years old I was really big so I could hit some home runs but I didn't really understand I was good at baseball till I was about 15. I went to a tournament in Georgia where there were 300 teams there Oh wow. and I was really intimidated going in but at the end of the tournament I realized that I could compete with everybody there and that was a little bit of a confidence boost and then that was kind of the catapult into where I realized that, hey, maybe I can play college baseball one day or maybe be a professional mm-hmm. baseball player one day. So I'd probably say 14 or 15 years old. Oh, uh, what tournament was it? Do you remember? It was called the WWBA. It was World – or maybe – I forget. What, it was. It's in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, East Cobb. It's a big – big baseball powerhouse city um pretty much every year uh, a lot of turn a lot of uh travel ball teams from around the country come to there and play like one big national championship uh baseball tournament yeah um, but yeah i think it's called the wwba world really- baseball bat champ i don't know something yeah. <laughs> but yeah, i know it's in georgia <laughs> yeah uh Everybody goes through hard times. What's the hardest thing that you have to um, overcome in sports? Oh, in sports, um, I've, had, I've been extremely blessed um, throughout my career. I've had every opportunity, thanks to my parents and coaches. Um, but overall, I've had a lot of injuries mm-hmm. in my experience with sports. So in high school, I had a hip surgery. Um, I tried to get back as fast as I could, got back to playing 100%, going into uh, the 2016 draft, ended up not getting drafted, which I was disappointed, but I was excited to go to uh, college. But then within college, I had four more surgeries and then kind of battled between recovering from those surgeries, but also trying to play the best that I could. Mm -hmm. Um, So overall, the whole up and down of having surgeries getting healthy again, playing well, having another surgery, getting healthy again, playing well, and having another one. Um, that would probably, in sports, that would be my biggest challenge that I've had, is just going up and down uh, between uh, not being able to play and then playing well. So, But we're still here. I'm in my fifth year here at Kentucky, and I'm ready to play another season. Yeah, I heard. Didn't you commit to another year there? Yep. So last yeah. year – Due to the whole COVID stuff, Mm -hmm. um, we played 16 or 17 games last year. So when the season got canceled, I was Mm -hmm. actually afraid that I was never going to play baseball again. 
I had no clue. I thought my career yeah. was over. Mm. And then like a month later, the NCAA mm -hmm. put out a big statement saying that they were giving eligibility to all the seniors and also the rest of the grades throughout the NCAA for spring sports. So oh. that was a huge sigh of relief for me. Yeah. And I was like, yep, going back. So I, yeah. our, athletic direct, our athletic director called me and uh, he was extremely nice because technically they didn't have to take me back, but it was all out of budget. Uh, they took the chance on me to bring me back and they welcomed me back with open arms. So I was like, sign me up. That's awesome. Uh, what's your greatest uh, like accomplishment in sports? In sports, honestly, it might be the same answer as my biggest hardship in sports mm -hmm. was going through the surgeries and still being able to get back up to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, there's something to be said about being knocked down over and over and over mm -hmm. and having the strength to come back and just go back to your regular self. You know so much about that, Cade, and that's mm -hmm. why I admire you so much. You're one of my biggest role models and Perfect. every surgery that I've ever had, I've reminded myself of you. Oh, um, you. So that's probably some of my biggest accomplishments too in baseball. Um, other than that, if we're doing on a less serious note, uh, we won a regional championship my freshman year here, but that was really fun and a really yeah. cool experience. It was the first time University of Kentucky has ever won a regional championship. So mm -hmm. that was cool. Oh, uh, that's so awesome. Uh, how do you how did you um stay in shape during quarantine? Ooh, you know it was tough to not eat a bunch of French fries and cheeseburgers all over quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, I had my mom cooking for me the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got to go home, experience all my mom's cooking again. Mm -hmm. So she whipped me into shape every single day. So mm -hmm. she made me good meals every. Uh, I was in charge of breakfast, so I made most of my breakfasts. Mm -hmm. But when it came dinner time. She made me eat right. And then other than that, the first month of training was mm -hmm. done just at my house because all the gyms were closed, batting mm -hmm. cages were closed. We couldn't really do a ton. So I did a lot of, at home and at my brother's house that was right down the street. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, but then eventually, gyms started opening back up, batting cages started opening back up a little bit. So not a ton changed there. I just mm -hmm. had to make sure I went and did it. Yeah. My, um, it's so hard, like, yeah, I like care, like, all, like, the local, like, batting cages, like, we have a batting cage here named, like, they have, like, a field, like, named Cox, and then they have a batting cage there, and, like, we, like, one time we had my cousins over, and we went over there, and uh, luckily, luckily it was open, but we, like, weren't, we weren't even, like, sure if it was gonna be open because <laughs> of, like, all the COVID and stuff, but, like, mm -hmm. luckily, but, yeah. Uh, what would you say to a 14-year-old kid who his dream is to play in the MLB? To never, ever give up on what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. um, ignore anybody that says that you can't. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you think that you've done enough, you need to do a little bit more. That's something that I, that I used to tell myself when I was your age. Even in college, sometimes I have to remind myself that you don't want to get too comfortable. Well, just when you think you're good enough, somebody knocks you down a little bit. So mm -hmm. however much work that you do to get as good as you can, just do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, over time, that'll add up into completing your dreams. That's really good advice. Uh, now I have some fun questions. Oh, I'm uh, excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what time you set your alarm? Excuse me? What time do you set your alarm? Oh, it depends. Um, most of the time, I set it for around 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, but today specifically, I didn't have class or anything. We had a complete off day, so I slept until 9. It felt really oh, good. Wow. But normally, I'm up by 7.30. Um, yeah, especially some, sometimes if we have practice, mm -hmm. uh, I have to set my alarm around 5.30 to get there by 6.30. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the day. But if I have nothing going on, I treat myself to sleeping in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, like me, like I've been like, I've, I've done, um, my elective is AVID in high school. So like, and it, that's zero, it's zero period. So I've been getting, and that's zero period starts at 6.50. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Yeah, so like, I've been getting up at 6.30 all day, like all the days. So then, um, so I'm like, you know, like during the weekends, I always like sleep in and stuff. You know, smart. You need a recharge for when you have to get yeah. up at 6.30 the next week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, What is your walk-up song? Ooh, last year, what was it? I had, I started the year with a song called Papa Loves Mambo. Mm -hmm. That was also my walk up my junior year too. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go, that was the one that I've used the most. It's kind of an old song. You should listen to it sometime. I, could, I, be, I bet you like it. It's kind of old school, has some horns in it. Yeah. Uh, but a little funky. Not, not your normal walk up song, but mm -hmm. definitely unique. Oh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> what's your um, favorite baseball movie? Oh, I mean, The Sandlot. The Sandlot. Oh. I've, I've watched The Sandlot mm. more than any movie that I've ever seen. Um, it's just timeless. It's so, it's so much fun every single time you watch it. Oh. But yeah. everybody loves Benny the Jet and Squints and Smalls. And it's, it's quotable. I, 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 at practice, I say you're killing oh. me, Smalls, at least five times. It, uh -huh. it, it, it's a go-to. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. That's my favorite movie. Yeah. I love um, Rookie of the Year. You know that one? That one makes me cry. Yeah, that one's so funny. <laughs> but, like, really funny, though, because, like, it's, like, at the a, very end. like, yeah, at the very end, like, when he, like, fell again, and he, like, his arm was back to normal. And it was, like, the worst <laughs> time ever. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Uh, what is your favorite glove company, Rawlings or Wilson? Um, here at Kentucky, we're sponsored by Rawlings. And luckily, that was my favorite glove growing up. So mm -hmm. definitely Rawlings. So I'm blessed that once I got here, they're like, here, have a Rawlings look. <laughs> it, felt, it felt pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, yeah, it's like so fun. Like we, I went, um, I spoke at um, UCI baseball and they mm -hmm. gave me like a um, Adidas glove. And it was so cool because like all, like if you go to Dick's Sporting Goods, like it's like all they had was only like Rawlings or Wilson. That's like all they have. So like that was like my first time ever seeing a Adidas glove. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And then they're like, here, you want to have it? I'm like, oh, sweet. It was so cool. There's some pretty cool Adidas gloves, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesse Love, would you rather? So we're gonna play that. Okay, uh, here we go. Yeah. Would you rather um play in a hundred degree heat or forty degree cold? Forty degree cold. I sweat too much. I would much rather the cold because you can, if it's cold, you can put on a bunch of layers. You'll see me out in the field with five long sleeves on. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can somewhat stay warm. Even mm -hmm. sometimes I get some hand warmers and put them in my back pocket. So in between pitches, I can put my hand back there and feel them. Yeah. But, but 100 degree heat, you're just stuck in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I feel like 100 degree heat, it's like there's nothing that you can like really do to like, like you can put like water all over like like on your neck to keep you cold but like you know it's just gonna get hot again like but like when it, if it's cold you can get yourself like heated up and you can stay that way sometimes our catchers since they have on all that gear they'll throw like mm -hmm. those cold cold rags around their neck yeah. while they're out there but that that's about as much as you can do yeah like even the um like now in the mlb like the um like the max masks that they're wearing, like it's the ones that they like, like, like the ones that they wear like in Baltimore, like when it's really cold. They mm -hmm. um, it's the ones that they wear like when they're like cold and stuff. It's really cool how to see those. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're if in if it's the bottom of the ninth inning, games on the line, would you rather be at the plate or um pitching? <laughs> I'm a horrible pitcher, so I'd much rather be at the plate. Mm -hmm. This this arm right here. Mm -hmm. Throws about 75 miles an hour. So I don't know how effective I'd be on a mound, especially against these SEC teams. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lot more comfortable with a bat in my hand. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, like, like when you, like, um, if you, like, hit a walk-off home run, like, you get, like, the Gatorade bath and stuff. It's really cool to see those. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Yeah. Um, would, if you're – um, would you rather um, play really good but your team loses – or you play really bad, but your team wins? Currently in my life, really bad, my team wins. There was a period in my life where I was a little bit selfish, and I might have said play really, really good, 
and have my team lose. Mm -hmm. But the older I get, the more I realize that I'm way more concerned about the team as a whole than myself. And I think that's an incredible lesson for younger kids, um, especially in sports, to learn is that if you can focus on your team as a whole, ultimately, I think you'll be surprised that you'll play better yourself too. So once I got into college, probably started learning that the team is way more important than individual stats and goals and stuff. So mm -hmm. definitely I'd rather play or I'd rather strike out eight times and us win than mm -hmm. play really good and lose. Yeah. Like all those like would you rather questions, like they always like, like I always tell my dad, like, those are just like on like your conscience. Like if you're like, it tests your conscience if you're like, when you play really good and your team loses or you play really bad and your team wins. Like, it's like playing, I know like playing bad is like the right answer because like it means like team is better. Mm -hmm. oh, but like sometimes it's hard to like say that. Yeah, um, it's definitely a really yeah. good question. Yeah. Um, thank you again for being here. Um, thank you for all you do with Nigu. Anytime, dude. I'm so happy that you guys invited me here, and it was amazing talking to you. Um, you asked some really good questions, especially that last one. It made me think a little bit. Uh -huh. um, but I had so much fun, and uh, you're the man. You're a stud. You're great at all. So it was a pleasure doing it with you. Yeah, thank uh, you. Awesome questions, Cater and TJ. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Jesse Reese Foundation, we appreciate you so much, whether it's you going into hospitals and delivering joy jars or hosting kids at Nigu Cruise at your games at Kentucky. We are just so thankful for you and for your heart and we wish you nothing but the best. We're so excited to watch you play again this year at Kentucky and uh, crush it out there. And um, we're just, we're rooting for you always. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Kate, I love your hat. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Good. I also have a um, high school hat right here. Oh, Is that my Terre Haute North? Yeah, that one right here. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Makes me happy. boy. Yeah. Well, thanks, TJ. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, Thank guys. you all. Had a lot of fun. See you later. Uh -huh.